Today's podcast is brought to you by Banzoogle. So I want to start by talking about choosing the right equipment. The reason I bring this up is I think percentage-wise, maybe 50% of all of the questions I receive, it might even be more than 50%, but at least 50% of all the questions I receive have to do with people needing my help or wanting suggestions for uh, their new equipment. They have to choose their first DJ set. They want to upgrade, get a new DJ set. And it's getting kind of difficult to choose because nowadays you have so many options. Now, I partially understand because when you were living in an era where you did not have a lot of choice, you just didn't have a lot of choice. So in my days, we had the turntable and that was it. You could go with a belt drive turntable or the pro version, of course, was the direct drive turntable, the Technics SL1200. That was it. You didn't have CDJs, you didn't have controllers, so that made it pretty easy. You started out with whatever type of turntable you could find, you would start to practice with that, and when you had the chance to upgrade, you would move on to the SL1200. Now, of course, we have so many different controllers, and you have so many different turntables and DVS, then you have all sorts of media players. You just have a lot of different options, and I understand that can make it a little bit more difficult sometimes. Um, so I'm going to read a couple of these questions and then try to add some value to that. But I do want to remind a lot of you, it's going to be really hard for me to give you an answer that is specifically for you without asking more questions. Now, I'll explain that in a second. So let me start with the first one. And I have a couple different ones. So the first one right here is... I studied the options you gave me. I've already talked to this person on IG. And the NS7 III is the controller, 100%. However, for portability, it's pretty heavy and not recommended. Well, that's a fact. If you want to just drag your controller around everywhere or take your controller everywhere, one of these big flagship controllers like an NS7 or Pioneer's SZ or Denon's MCX8000, uh, those are pretty big. You want to go with like a bit more of a compact controller. I understand. Uh, so I was looking at Roland's DJ808 and DJ505. I fell in love with the 505, but the jog wheel has no visual indication on or around the jog wheel. I believe the 808 does. I just think the 808 is overkill as I don't need a four channel. Please help. Your opinion means a lot. All right. Not answering it yet. Moving on to the next question first. Same topic. All right, so here we go. This is from Australia. Really love the podcast and YouTube channel. Salute, always good to hear that. I wanted to ask, is a controller a good way to start? Uh, I used to bedroom DJ in my younger days, but I've decided to give it a go since I've moved to, to Australia. And all the friends I made here are all DJs around my city. So now I want to give it another go. So is a controller a good way to go? Which one should I get? Not answering it yet. Moving on to the next question. You get where I'm going with this, right? All right, let's see. All right, we have one more right here. I haven't touched my DJ controller or software in about a year. But would you recommend any Numark NS7 as a middle ground for a DJ wanting to feel a vinyl without buying turntables, a mixer, vinyl, and software? All right, so three questions, three similar questions, and in my case, this is what I see a lot. People either have no idea what to get yet, or they're deciding between a couple of different controllers, um, or they have a more specific question, but in most cases, they tell me options and then ask me what my suggestion would be. So let's break it down first, and this is a way to answer most of these questions. You need to figure out a couple of things. First off, you need to know what your budget is going to be, and if this is going to be your first controller, first DJ device, you don't want to overspend because a lot of times you might feel that DJing is something you want to do, uh, but it might end up just being a hobby that you do every once in a while. If that's the case, you don't want to spend too much money. I've seen people buy entire DJ sets spending like a thousand or thousands and then needing to put them up on eBay like two months later. 
and you don't get the money that you paid for it, you're going to get less. So that's not worth it. If you buy your first car, most likely you're not buying the most expensive car out there. You're going to start with something cheaper and simple so you can actually gain some more experience before you eventually may upgrade to a better, more expensive car. So one question was about mobility, portability, like the NS7 is, is a little bit too big. Looking at the Roland 808 and 505, really loving the 505, but it doesn't have the visual indicator. If you know that you prefer to have a controller that has the visual indicator, so either it has a jog wheel with a display in there that has like the moving little stripe, that's your visual indicator, or certain controllers will have that light on the outside of the jog wheel. If this is something that you prefer, and I'm definitely somebody who needs that. If I don't have moving platters so I can put a sticker on it, and I'm using a controller that does not move, I want to have some sort of visual indicator that shows me where the track is. I need that for my turntablism, for scratches. I just love to have that. If you already know that this is something that's important for you, then you can scrap all of the controllers that don't have that. Simple as that. That's going to take out a bunch of controllers, and there's going to be a lot of controllers that will still be in the race because they do have that. Um, now, in your case, the 505 doesn't have it. You believe the 808 does. Just off the top of the head, I can't really tell you. I don't know if the 808 has it, but you already just explained like that 808 is a bit overkill. It has four channels. That's something you don't need. If you know for a fact that you don't need four channels, that you never use four channels, then that is something you can basically skip. If you eliminate that, then that leaves you with two channel controllers with the visual indicator. That's going to narrow it down. Now, if you also have a preferred software, it's going to narrow it down even more because certain controllers are going to be for Serato, certain are going to be for Tractor, certain are going to be for Rekordbox. So if you have software that you prefer to use, that's going to make your choice a little bit easier once again. All of those things help. And if I wanted to give you a specific answer, I would have to ask you a lot of these questions. Are you looking for this? Do you need that? Do you want that? Which software? You name it. Now, of course, I never do that. So I don't go into these back and forth through email or on IG because that's going to just take up too much time. That's like a full-on consultation. So that's not what I'm doing right now. And if I would ever start to do that, I would actually have to charge for that because that's really going to take a chunk of my time to give everyone, like I said, like special consultation. So those things alone should help you to narrow it down budget and knowing what you actually need and things you really don't need. If you take that into consideration, including which software you're going to use, that should narrow it down to, well, at least a lot less options when it comes to the controllers out there. Now, the same thing with someone looking for something that has the uh, feel of vinyl without buying turntables or a mixer. If you know that you want to have a controller that has that turntable feel, that's something that's perfect to know because that's going to really narrow it down. It's going to eliminate all of the controllers that do not have moving platters. In this case, that leaves you with a short list, but in recent times, the list did become a little bit bigger. So already the herefore mentioned NS7 and NS7 2 and 3, those were controllers with moving platters. Then you had the standalone units, the V7 also by Numar, they have that. You have a couple of older, like really older devices. I don't think I would recommend those, but you have a couple. And then if you look at the newer devices, you have the Rain 12. They're more expensive, but those have moving platters. You have the Denon SE5000. M version, so that also has the smaller moving platter, more like an NS7 size. And for instance, if you're watching the video right now, now you also have this right here. That's the new S4 by Native Instruments, which also has moving platters. Um, if you know that, it narrows your choices down. Then you have to figure out Am I okay with a controller that has a smaller moving jog wheel or do I want to have the real deal vinyl feel 
with a 12 inch. If you need a 12 inch, then you're gonna end up with the Rain 12. If a smaller controller, smaller jog wheel is fine, then you have more choices and then you should do a comparison to see what can I get on the S4. Do I wanna use tractor? If the answer is no, then there's no S4. If the answer is yes, then there's basically only the S4 you wanna go for. And if it's a Serato, you have a couple of options. So that should narrow it down for you. And I agree that if you wanna have turntable feel, but you don't wanna get like that full set with players and everything, one of those controllers will be your best option. So that's what you guys and girls need to start doing is make that list. What's your budget? What is it that you absolutely need to have on your device, players, whatever it is you want to um, buy? And what are features that I actually totally don't need? Does it need to be mobile? Then all of the big controllers are out. Uh, do I want to have something that feels more like a club set? Then you want to have something that's a little bit bigger. All of those things will help you when it comes to deciding. All right, there was one more thing, one more question. Which one am I forgetting now? Um... Where is it? Where is it? That was the one from Australia. So this question was basically, and this is the question I received like a lot of times, like I want to get something, a controller, which one should I get? You got to think of all the things I just talked about. And once you do that, you just take a look at one of the bigger audio, uh, um, audio sites. I mean like audio stores where they sell the controllers, um, look online, and then you can start to compare. Uh, you can probably find some lists with like uh, best controllers 2018, then you see the newer versions. Um, but just realize if it's your first controller, you wanna go for something that's a little bit more entry level. Don't go for something that costs you like a thousand bucks. Go for something that's gonna cost you like a couple of hundred because you have some nice options for that price already and uh, start there. So if you're on a tight budget, you're gonna, all of those high tech big controllers with all of these features, they're gonna be out for now. Uh, that's up to you, but this is why you can't just ask me which one you should buy. So I hope you understand what I'm talking about. And I'll talk about this for years to come, like I've done for years in the past, because I know I'll receive 10 more questions like this in the coming days already. But that's fine. I'm perfectly fine with that. But just realize most of the times you're not going to get the answer that you're probably looking for. Bazoogle makes it easy to build a stunning website for your music in minutes. You can choose from hundreds of mobile friendly themes and then customize your design and content in a few clicks with Bazoogle's easy visual editor. Now, all the features you need for a professional website are already built in, including tools to sell your music and merch commission free, mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send newsletters, and integration to pull in content from all your online services, including Twitter, Instagram, and SoundCloud. I use Bazoogle to create the Share the Knowledge podcast website and that was very easy. Banzoogle plans start at just $8.29 a month and include your own free custom domain name. Now, if you want to try it out for free for 30 days, click on the link in the description box down below and be sure to use the promo code SHARE to get 15% off the first year of your subscription.